Locked and loaded, ladies and gentlemen. Back for another segment, Everything Combat, because life is a fight. Looking forward to chopping it up with this gentleman, man. He's, you know, very, very established, accomplished mixed martial arts and boxer, as it were. And uh, we even saw a little bit of his commentating game a couple months ago. He will be on the main event coming up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, May 8th, live from the River Center, where he's going to be facing a very game opponent, the Perfect Storm. Riley Ducho is looking to pick up his 15th win, but standing in his way is Showtime. Eric Sheldon, six-time UFC veteran. What's up, brother? How we going down there? Who We catching up with him. He's down in America, top team down in Florida, getting the final tweaking and, and locking in the final stages of his training camp. How you doing tonight, sir? Doing good, boss. Doing good. Loving this weather out here, man. <laughs> Yeah, you make you jelly, dude. We here in the quad cities of Davenport where we were just at like 70 degrees a week or so ago. And now we're talking about snow, et cetera. But we digress. Man, again, it's so good to catch up with you, man, because a lot has been going on, you know, since we last talked and last time you were on the uh, Cage Regression commentating team. Just briefly, if you can, during a lot of that, um, bef- before this fight and in between the commentating, you jumped into a little bit of boxing. Talk to us a little bit how that came about. Yeah, man, well... I I'd signed with the promotion Aries uh, out, and it was going to be out in Paris. So I was kind of trying to avoid any MMA fights to that would disrupt my my contract. So I was like, I wanted to stay busy, you know. I wanted to do something, and uh, boxing is it was just there. They started doing a promotion out there in the Quad City. So I was like, let me see uh, see how it hold my own in boxing. You know, I love I love striking, and and it's, I felt like it would help my game in MMA a little bit anyway. It wouldn't hurt to try it, so I gave it a shot. You know, right. I had fun, man. It was a good time. Got him out of there in the second, so I was happy with it. Go. Easy, quick work. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Well, you know, this this gentleman you're going to be fighting, he, in his own right, is a UFC veteran, participated in the Contender Series. You, being a six-time UFC vet, you uh, have gone to, you know, the Ultimate Fighter, and that's the cool thing about Case Degression, man. You, this is this is no outlaw mud show, man. These kids are absolutely elite fighters, game and ready to fight. So they've gone on to promotions like the UFC, Bellator, LFA, and even when they've gone there, they've even come back to a very well-established Case Degression. Talk to us a little bit about your opponent coming up, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dutro, and uh, what what have you been studying him? What tendencies he might have that you've been trying to look at? And uh, what's the game plan come Saturday night? Well, I, I've seen him. We actually have a similar opponent, uh, Jordan Espinosa. He fought Jordan Espinosa on the Contender Show. I, I had a, and that was when my that was my last UFC fight was Jordan Espinosa. So I had already seen him fight before when I found out I was fighting Jordan. So I knew who he was when uh, Mike offered me the fight and his style, you know, I kind of, this is going to be my first fight back in a while. So I was like, I want to fight where I can put on for the fans and show, you know, some of the stuff I've been working and he, he likes to stand and brawl. So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm looking to do, go out here and, and put on a show for the fans, you know, and, uh, and show why I deserve to be back in the UFC. And he's the perfect, you know, he's the perfect matchup. I feel to do that. So I'm excited about the fight. I'm excited about, you know, what we're going to do and, and how everybody's going to react to what I do to this guy. Well, and I've always said, man, I'm, I'm stealing this line. How can you be great unless you study greatness and iron sharpens iron? You're down there with some, you know, a great, a very well-established team, an American top team. Talk to us a little bit how the training's been going. Oh, it's camp. amazing, man. I've been staying out here with my with my buddy Juan, Juan Puerta. He's actually, he actually fought for Cage Aggression. He's got the flyweight title out there too, man. He's a, he's a stud, Titan world champion, you know, and I got, you know, tons of, Tons of talent out here, man. The gym's becoming a small man gym. There's so many guys in there. We got Adriano, uh, who just beat Mighty Mouse. Um, we have, uh, you know, Pantoja. The list goes on and on. You know, there's tons of talent. So I'm, I'm getting nothing but the best work. So uh, that's why I had to make my way out here. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about, you know, it all showcasing it on uh, May 8th. Absolutely. May 8th, CageAggression.tv, ladies and gentlemen, is where you'll be able to catch it. And so you mentioned something about trying to get back into the UFC. I mean, obviously, you're still a young man, you know, many, many more years to go, many more fights to go. What is kind of uh, Eric Showtime's long term plan? God willing, everything goes your way on May 8th. You know, um, I don't know. man. I just I want to get back to the UFC. I know I belong there. You know, I belong fighting with the best. That's where I belong. You know, it's just uh, I feel I'm finally starting to become a, a full fighter, you know, mentally and everywhere. I think my first run in the UFC, I wasn't mentally prepared for the moment you know and i've you know over the years i've went through a lot of adversity and i've you know i've battled through a lot of things these last few years so i'm excited to you know show that in the cage i think it'll go hand in hand you know life is is rough and my my fight career has been the same way and i've 
you know, I've battled through it. So I think, uh, I think this is just going to be the beginning of something great, you know, so I'm excited to go out there and put on. Put on a good show. Absolutely. I mean, you know, none of these things come, nothing comes easy in life. And you find some of the most elite, accomplished MMA fighters have definitely have a lot, had a lot of adversity that they've had to overcome. And if you don't mind, I mean, we, we, I've just a short time that I've been with Cage Regression. I've watched the company just explode leaps and bounds. You know, our, our pay-per-view platform has allowed people from all over the world to see us. Talk to us a little bit, if you can, on the growth of the company, Cage Regression. Man, it, it's insane. You know, I, I love to watch it. You know, I I was there from the beginning. You know, I was fighting for him when we started in a barn. You know what I mean? So it's it's amazing to watch <laughs> the growth and and the things they've done and the amount of stuff. Like now it's pay per view. Like this is crazy. Mike is doing doing crazy things. Three night events now. You know, like it's just <laughs> right. evolution is amazing, man. And the production and the way they do things and the way they take care of their fighters. It's just you know second to none. So I'm glad to be a part of it. And if I was you know coming back. It, I don't feel like I'm taking steps back going to fight on Case Aggression. You know, I feel like that's Absolutely not. They, they, prom, they, they promote me well and, they, you know, they take care of me, you know, and they give me great matchups. Like this guy is coming off the contender, you know, coming from Hawaii all the way out there, you know. So it's a it's an amazing promotion, man. I think I think it's got more bigger things coming their way, too, as well. So. Without a doubt. And we have a former uh, NFL veteran going to be fighting on that card as well. And, you know, Mike, like Mike has said, he has had to turn down so many fighters in the hundreds because people are so wanting to come and flock here to Case Aggression. I mean, not only is it a, an elite level of talent that we see here, we obviously have two UFC. One's not a Hall of Famer yet, but he's technically a Hall of Famer. You got Jens Evil Pulver and uh, Pat Militich calling the fights. And again, you know, I don't want to forego the rest of your MMA career, but when we talked, when we got you in the broadcast seat, that was something that you felt you had an affinity for broadcasting. Obviously, this is going to take place down the line, but give us your thoughts on that opportunity that we had to sit with you and call the fights here at Case Aggression. Oh, I enjoyed it, man. I, you know, I've, I've always felt like I was well-spoken and I could, you know, I can do, I've been around the sport long enough that I can speak on it. So yeah, I, uh, I enjoy that part of it too. I want to be able to do all, all things in MMA, you know, I think I can, I can do the commentating after fighting, you know, open my gym, you know, have plans after that. I got to I got to take all outlets of this, you know, because I've put so much of my time into this, you know, all my life. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. So I think the commentating, you know, and anything I can get my hands in, I'm going to I'm going to take full advantage of. And well, and that's another thing you commented on, you know, whether it's during your career or post your career, you were talking about training people and, and you know, teaching and, and opening a gym, et cetera. Give us a little thoughts on that, because I think that's absolutely important. And I think, you know, whether you're a Pat Militich or you, you've been there before, these kids could really sit under the learning tree and learn from you guys who've actually been on that next level. Give us your thoughts on, you know, potentially down the line doing a little bit of training or, you know, opening your own gym. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal, man. All the things I've been able to take, I mean, from Pat Millitz, I trained at his gym, you know, and, you know, every every fighter I've ever trained under, you know, I've learned so much from, and it's it's helped me so much in my life, you know, and, and kept me out of the streets and kept me out of trouble, you know, and I would not want anything else but to pass that on down the line, you know, and just to the next up and coming fighters. And I think, I think to do that, you know, I have to, I have to be, I have more I have to accomplish. And for more people to want to train with me, I want, I want to do more. Well, and when I read, you know, a lot of the fighter bios, the information they give us as they come to the ring, if I had a dollar for every time I read mixed martial arts and training has kept me out of trouble, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd be a very, very rich man. And it's kind of cool, man, because so many people that I've talked to, whether it's Pat Militich, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Boss Root, and Randy Couture yourself, I mean, you happen to be a religious man, but it's always so interesting to see how mixed martial arts not only has been a, a, a avenue for people to change their lives, it's never about let me go in there and train so I can whoop people's asses. It's always yeah. a, like, you know, you can probably attest to it. It's always when you step into the cage and when you're training, it's a battle against yourself and you wind up learning so much about discipline and humility. It's more of a, a spiritual journey than it is a physical hands up, knocking people out journey. If you can speak to that a little bit, how that affects how that's, that's a part of your, your MO. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a hundred percent correct, man. I, I don't think, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for MMA, to be honest with you. I mean, it's helped me in everything, discipline, anger, you know, talking with people, speaking with people, learning, the, you know, you know, proper, even proper grandma having interviews and stuff, just everything, man. I mean, stuff that I, in, in school, I had, I struggled with, you know, I'm, I'm like really good with that stuff now, you know, and it's all, all because of MMA. And uh, I, uh, I would, I would tell anybody, you know, I don't know, if I would want my kids, you know, to have to go through what I went through and then 
doing MMA, I've been able to be a, a better dad, a better everything. So I don't know. I wish I wish I could just I want to pass that on to, you know, everybody that I meet, you know, and any any kid that I can come into their life. I want to be able to show them what a path that, you know, maybe they would be interested in. Well, and yeah, your upbringing, you know, as you expressed, is never was never roses and sunshine. And you find people who were at the upper level of things like combat sports or or NBA or whatever. It never came easy. And, yeah. you know, part of this reward that you received not after putting in the work was being on something like the ultimate fighter, which has been a game changing experience for so many fighters. If you don't mind, just give us a little insight on what that was like to kind of be at that upper level, the potential of the upper level being on the ultimate fighter. I mean, it was it was awesome, man. It was uh you know, looking back, I wish I would have I would have soaked in my UFC, you know, my run and and the Ultimate Fighter a little more, and I would have been more in the moment, you know. But I was, I think like, I think I didn't take it in, and that's why I know that the the next run I do have, it's gonna be it's gonna be great, and I'm gonna do great things, and because I I'm, I'm prepared now, you know. But the Ultimate Fighter definitely helped me with that. I have had, you know, I got to meet tons of great fighters that are still, you know, top ten in the UFC right now, top five guys that I've already fought. You know, so it's just it was an it was an amazing experience. I was taken away from like they took my phone, so I wasn't on you know, social media. I had no 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 distractions, you know. And it was an awesome it was an awesome thing. And uh, but the experience I would say is is definitely is definitely worth the while. It was pretty it was pretty it was pretty amazing. Well, and that's you know hindsight's always twenty twenty, and you're still a very young man. But at least you have that introspection. To, to understand the value of what that was. I mean, we're all works in progress, right? We all would love to show up and, like you said, like be in the moment like you should be. But, I mean, you you have made the most of it, obviously. And I know, you know, the sky's the limit still for your future. So, I mean, it's, again, I think that's so cool uh, talking to individuals like yourself, coming off of something like that, coming – the story arc of all of us as human beings that works in progress to go from, you know, not necessarily where you want to be to growing and getting these opportunities and being able to take the most advantage of it as you can. And again, it's so cool to hear you kind of uh, speak introspectively about what that what that has meant to you and the fact that you're not even close to done yet. It just um, I think it's a testament to kind of who you are. You aren't a quitter in any way, shape or form. Not a, no, no, not at all, man. I think, uh, that, like I said, it's just the beginning for me. You know, all those years I've put in, you know. I feel like I'm just starting to break the surface in my my abilities, man. And, uh, you know, I'm finally I feel like I'm finally mentally prepared, you know, because my biggest my biggest battle was against myself every fight. You know, anytime I've ever I've never been finished, you know, in my in my career, you know, my whole professional career, I've never been finished. It's always been decisions, you know, and I think if I would have fought my my best, you know, and I wasn't dealing with the things I was dealing with in life and I wasn't dealing with my own mental problems, I would have been. I would already be at the number two in the world, number three in the world, you know? So I just think uh, all, you know, my path is a little longer than others. And I think it's going to pay off at the end, you know, like guys like Dustin Poirier, he's a perfect example. And he gives me, you know, he gives me a lot of hope, man. This guy has been fighting since he was 18 at the highest of the level, you know, and he's, you know, just now touching the title. Can you imagine fighting all those years and, yeah. you know, and fighting against Well, the that's best. what's so cool. And we talk about it all the time, whether it's with Jens or people like yourself or Pat Miller, to, the, the psychological, the mind state in being a fighter. You know what I mean? It's not for everybody. And it's so cool, again, listening to you speak so much more introspectively and have that humility, and, you know, a humble pie on the plate at all times. So you don't look at anything that maybe didn't go your way as a failure. It's just always an opportunity to learn. And you can just tell that you, you have used those opportunities to learn. And so here you are. Yeah, exactly, man. And I'm glad it's going to be on Cage Aggression that I get to go out here and showcase the best me. So I'm excited, man. It's going to be amazing, dude. And it's going to be back in front of my fan, my fan base that I started with. So, you know, what better way to start back, you know, climb to the top. Yeah, without a shadow, without a shadow of a doubt, man. So it's going to be May 8th, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Showtime is going to be facing off against his opponent. Let me sorry, Sorry, I got it up here. He is going to be looking for his 15th professional win, but he definitely has his work cut out for him going up against Eric Showtime Shelton. It's going to be the perfect storm. Riley Dutro up against, of course, six-time UFC veteran. Any final words from your friends, for your family? What are we looking out for, baby? Yeah, man. I'm any just predictions? A, I don't want to put you on the spot, but any hey, predictions? Hey, man, I, I got a prediction that he's going to bed. I I have a feeling <laughs> he's gonna go to bed. I've been working my hands. I've been working everything, you know. But you know, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for a finish. I'm tired of the judges. I'm tired of that. I'm I'm looking for the finish. So 
be, you know, keep your eyes open and, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that finish in May 8th. I, I guarantee my hand's going to be raised. Well, and again, ladies and gentlemen, cageaggression.tv. And the unique thing about Cage Aggression, uh, more than any other promotions, not only is our talent exceptional, the production's exceptional. We got Jens Pope, we got Pat Militich calling the fight. If you want to order this fight, you could order it through Eric Shelton. When you go to cageaggression.tv, it's basically a referral code. You click on Eric's name and you can purchase the pay per view uh, under this guy's name, and he gets a little portion of the proceedings. Eric, you, any uh, social networking, any stuff where you could throw out there where people could follow your progress, my friend? Yeah, man. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's East Showtimes. Uh, Twitter, Showtime One MMA, uh, and Eric Showtime Shelton on Facebook. You know, follow me. I, I post a lot. I've been posting a lot more out here in Florida, my training and stuff like that. Yo, know, and I just want to give a shout out to all my fans that have stuck with me through the, you know, through the ups and downs. It's been it's been a long one, but uh, we're about to start making that climb back to the top. So shout out to everybody that stuck with me. All my sponsors that stayed with me, never been stronger, is a big one for me. Um, they, they keep me, keep my supplements coming in, you know, it's, a uh, you know, it's been a, and a shout out to my boy Juan for letting me stay with him out here in uh, Florida, because otherwise I don't think it would be able to happen, you know, so there's so many things I'm blessed for, but, uh, and thank you for having me on the show, my man. Absolutely, man. He's getting ready May 8th to get on the good foot and do the bad thing. He's finishing up his camp down there at American Top Team in Florida. Look up that camp because, you know, there's no slouches coming out of there. Eric Showtime Shelton, I wish you all the best, man. Safe travels coming back to the quad and uh, looking forward to calling your fight May 8th. My man. See you soon, brother. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, peace and all that love. We'll holler at you here in a little bit.